Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. Thought I'd just keep going with the videos today. Why not put out a second one for the afternoon? And we may even live stream a little later. In fact, let's live stream a little later. We'll do that around 5 o'clock here on the West Coast. For those of you who want to catch the live stream later, we'll talk a little bit more about our earlier video and uh, talk a little bit more about this video, which I just went and Googled, like, Fed and then started typing in whoever I could think of who is at the Federal Reserve. And not necessarily like the names you always hear, like John Williams and stuff, although I did put in John Williams' name. But I put in like uh, Loretta, uh, Mester, and Bostick, and all these other, every Fed official I could think of. And every single one of them, when you look at the news articles that are attached to their name, you will find that all of them are talking about tighter monetary policy. None of them are talking about the reversal of interest rates. None of them. And so when you hear people talking about pivot or the Fed's gone too far or the Fed has already caused the pain or they whatever about ready to pivot. And when you hear all the hype about how the market is going to turn around, it's not going to happen. The Federal Reserve is not in any position to do it. Just look at the links that I leave down in the description for you guys. And now it has been said time and time again from me on this channel that the Federal Reserve is not going for a 2% target. We have to keep that in mind because nowhere, never can I find anybody talking about average inflation. Not out of the Fed, not out of the Fed's speeches, not since the day that they said that they were changing the way that they were targeting inflation have they talked about average inflation. Now tell me that that is not done on purpose to try and get the people's perception to, to be whatever they're guiding it to be. I mean, if they really wanted them to understand how they were going to fight inflation, they would be talking about average inflation rate. They would be talking about how they're going for that average inflation. But instead, people think, of their, <clears throat> think that they're going for a target. And now that we're starting to see the news that the hot inflation is starting to cool, not necessarily reverse by any means. It's still incredibly hot inflation according to the numbers, but it's not as hot as they thought it was going to be. And so they're going to continue to keep the interest rates elevated until they can get the inflation rate down. But it's not just that until they get it down. We've got to remember that. They are going to get it down and then keep it down for a significant amount of time, which means that they are going to keep the interest rates elevated for a significant amount of time after the inflation rate comes down. See, a lot of people are anticipating as soon as the inflation comes down, they're gonna reverse course. That's not the case. It's not gonna happen that way. Just go and look at all the Fed speeches that are out there and all the articles that you read out there. All of them are talking about how the tighter monetary policy is going to continue to, is going to stay in place for, this, for the foreseeable future. And now what I find interesting about this is at the exact same time, they're talking about the rise of stable coins and how the issuance of a central bank digital currency could make the, I don't know, monetary system more efficient. Now, what I think about interesting about this is that they're using this crisis here, right? This, this monetary issue to introduce a digital currency, whether it's through the stable coins, which can be pretty much have the monetary policy transfer through a stable coin if it's pegged one to one with the dollar or the issuance of a central bank digital currency in general. But you can see the talk about it is definitely more prevalent now than just about any time in, in history, right? Because it's, it's obvious, right? So when I think about what it is that is occurring right now with the Federal Reserve and the lifting of interest rates and going to cause some serious pain to the economy, at the same time, we have this introduction of the central bank digital currencies or tokenization of pretty much everything that is out there. I'm going to leave some links down in the description for you guys to check this out. So I have to, I, I just have to think like, how long will it take? I don't know. But at some point in the future, we are going to have a crisis scenario, especially when it comes to the monetary policy. Because look at the, I'm going to leave one more article down there. Oh gosh, guys, you know me. When I drink too much coffee, I just babble like crazy. There's an article I'm going to leave down in there from John Williams who's talking about how the monetary policy has not been as effective as people think it is going to be. Um, as, I'm just going to leave it at that because I, I haven't gone and actually looked into what exactly he was meaning by that. I was hoping that he was going to do a speech soon or something that was describing what it is that he was talking about inside of this. But I'm going to leave the article for you to, to, to judge for yourself. 
I honestly believe that it's more about the cent about the supply chain and the breaking down on the supply chain that had more of an impact on the inflation that we were seeing and how we are now seeing the inflation start to come down since we've had the mandates and all the supply chain issues start to come to an end, we are now seeing the inflation start to come down, just exactly like how I said it was going to do. But everybody wants to point at the Federal Reserve and say it's the Federal Reserve and the lifting of interest rates and putting an impact on the on the demand from the consumer, you know, as far as they're not able to go out there and just do those purchases like they once were, if the interest rates are elevated, even the Federal Reserve is saying that's not necessarily the case. It's more about the supply chain. It's It's always been that way. And I mean, it's a supply and demand. If you screw up the supply and the demand is elevated, especially when you hit them with a the stimulus, which everybody then blames it on, then you're going to have inflation. I mean, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy after that. But I just wanted to put these articles out there because I just want everybody to be aware of what it is that the Federal Reserve is doing. Like, you know, just like anything out there, just like if you are, you know, if you're into fishing, fishing is a great example of it. Because, like, have you ever seen anybody who fishes really well? Like, they know exactly what bait to use, what lures to use, where to fish, what time of day, what they're fishing for, what depth, you know, to, to fish at. Like, these guys really understand it. It's because they've been in the game as long as they have, right? Every single time they go out fishing, they get another experience on catching fish and they get a little bit better understanding on how to catch those fish. And every time they do that, they become a better fisherman. And people look at these people and say like, man, how are they so good at what they do? It's because they study it so much. And that's where I'm trying to get like a lot of people to kind of understand what it is that they need to know in order to make the right decisions for themselves because you're going to find a lot of information out there on the internet a lot of information out there on mainstream media that will only give you a little tiny piece of what it is that's happening out there but never go into any kind of real depth or discussion of what it is that this means throughout history or time or anything like that it's just like they just give you a little tiny chunk and then expect you to to be totally understanding of everything that's happened out there, but it's really, it's a, it's much deeper and broader than, than just a tiny piece of it. You know, I mean, just comparing like the inflation scenarios that we are having right now to like the seventies or back to like, say world war two or something like that. I mean, there, there was a lot of similarities and there's a lot of differences inside of that. You know, and that's one of the things that I tried to get to to try and tell people is just like, yeah, there was both monetary issues taking place now and back in the 70s. And there was supply chain issues taking place back during World War Two and supply chain issues that are taking place now. There's a lot of similarities inside of these two. The difference between World War Two and now is that during the war effort, there was a supply chain issue because most of the supply was going to the war effort. It actually got consumed by the war. Here in the United States, the supply chain issue was a breakdown of the supply chain, not necessarily a consumption of all that supply. That supply was available, it just wasn't available through the supply chain. Once it became available again, then the prices of everything started to show themselves to come down. And then back in the 70s, we did have a monetary issue where we're, there was destruction of the dollar causing the inflation to happen, but it was a much different scenario. I mean, just look around the world right now, the stronger dollar is continuing. Like, I mean, yeah, you see the dollar has come down, the dollar index, it came down to like 106 from 110 or 112 or 111, whatever it had gone to. It, that's, believe me, it's not going to continue down. I mean, you don't have to believe me. Don't believe me, actually. I don't care if you believe me. But the, my point being is that the monetary policy coming from the Federal Reserve is going to continue to tighten the liquidity. They're going to continue to pull that liquidity back out of the market. If they do that, what it's going to do is it's going to make it harder for people to buy the treasuries that are out there because you need dollars to buy treasuries. If it makes it more difficult to buy treasuries, then guess what? The price of the treasuries go just goes down and the yields begin to rise. And that's how it works. So as long as they continue to tighten up this monetary policy and they continue to promise pain and they continue to keep the interest rates elevated at the Fed funds level, we are going to continue to see the markets go down. We are going to see the housing market have difficulties. We are going to see the pain start to increase and we are going to see some serious issues when it starts coming to things like pension funds and stuff like that. So anyway, I guess I'm on a doomsday kick, right? Uneducated economists, you guys let me know.